Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and I'll be honest with you, right off the bat I'm feeling pretty sick today ladies and gentlemen but also I'm not as sick as that Rangers performance actually made me feel as we're here to actually react and discuss to Aberdeen 2 Rangers nil, a game of football that saw us go to Petaudry a week away from what is all that's left for us this season, the league's gone People, we blew that several opportunities. We were nowhere near good enough and Celtic deservedly won the league, right? That's gone. The league is gone. All that we've got left is next weekend and we had one game left. One game to show what we are about as a team and actually go into that game that's all that's actually left on actual high spirits and good form. And what did we do with that one game that's left versus the third best team in this country? Did we turn up? Did we look slick? Did we look fantastic? Did we come away with a fantastic moral victory in there feeling good about ourselves? No, people. In fact, well, I think it's the exact opposite. What we've done in that game of football right there encapsulates everything that's went wrong this season. If you can somehow muster all that into one 98 minute game of football, you got it in there because we created so many opportunities, genuinely so many opportunities for us to score, but we've got strikers who couldn't score in a brothel. Neither one of them knows what an offside rule is and neither one of them can finish. They need five or six opportunities for every single goal they get. I don't care if you like his song or he looks, oh look, he looks cute, he's all grumpy, I don't care. People. The only people that's grumpy is us having to watch them actually go out there right now, right? So we created numerous opportunities for them. They wasted and just blew every opportunity we created their way. But on the other way, people, we also created the best opportunities for Aberdeen and they took some of them and we ended up with a loss. And, you know, I'm just sitting back and reflecting on this game of football and uh, obviously, with it being away from home, I've just came to start filming right away, which is probably a bad idea, because usually if I'm at the game and it takes me a wee while to get back and that, I can sort of formulate a thought and a plan for a video. I've not got that the day. All I'm going to tell you is how I feel about this team, this season, where we're gone, and obviously the game people. Because to me, we've got a goalie who does not goalie, right? I know he's made the odd save here or there, but he's nowhere near the standard we came to expect and love. You know he's my hero, so it hurts to say that. But we've not got a goalie that can goalie. We've got a defence who's better gone forward than actually, you know, doing their job of defending. So we've got a goalie who can't goalie, a defence that can't defend. We've got a midfield that, I'll be honest, has been strengthened in January. Cantwell and Raskin is two very important pieces when you've got the likes of Tillman. There is creativity there, but our midfield is completely wasted and made irrelevant because of what's in front of it and the standard that sat in front of it because every little good or every good thing that this midfield does for us in games are completely wasted on the guys in front as we have strikers. I don't care how hard they run or look, he can do this, he can hold the ball. I didn't care about that. You know what the main primarily job of a striker actually is, people? It's to put the ball into the back in it, and we've got strikers who require, again, five, six, seven, eight, nine opportunities, and seven, eight, nine through balls to actually get onside, so that's how I feel, and you know what's worrying, people, Michael Beale tell us this week, sorry, that the starting 11 that we saw last week, which was actually the same as starting 11 today, minus maybe McGregor or Morelos, will be here next season, are you feeling good about yourself, knowing that's the standard we are going to see, because to me, again, we've learned nothing, but I again, some of them has cool songs, and some of them look grumpy on social media, and grumpy during games, so that's the only thing that really matters these days, that's what it takes to be a Rangers player, it's no actually end product, and performing, and actually giving like you care, or actually perform at a level that's expected when you play for a team like Rangers, it's all the other stuff there, woohoo, so I people, that's all it takes and everything like that, and that's where I'm going to go with this game, because it is a weird one to actually look at, right, because there was, again, several opportunities for us to win this game, and if we had any clinical finisher on that part, we would have won this game, and all the feelings and all the frustrations just wouldn't exist right now, but again, we are, as always, the masters 
of our own downfall we are is always playing games with two hands behind our actual back because this game should have been out of sight in the first 30 minutes of this game. Now I wouldn't be doing my job correctly if I didn't mention the first actual main action of the game came about the 11th minute where I think Big John Souter got away with a back pass on McGregor and I think the referees had an absolute howler and when you see it back it's as blatant as it actually comes but I'm not sitting here to pick on Big Soapy because if there was one player on the outfield again from that defence that actually looked like a defender and put himself a boot it was him and I actually thought he had a pretty damn good game maybe I'm wrong about it maybe he looks better because the guy next to him it's absolutely absolutely folding like a deck chair people the second that Connor Golden has left you're starting 11 Ben Davies who looked so ever reliable has absolutely fallen apart and it shows you he needs that leader beside him to get him to that level and to keep him at that level and that's a real worry to me because I thought he was a lot better than this now again people can have bad spells or bad blips and everything like that. fingers crossed this lad he's just gone through one of them because again he did have a howler versus the Celtic game maybe he's no feeling himself right now but it needs to be a hell of a lot better than that in my personal opinion because again he never won a header at all the day he was stinking in the air again and he was a continued threat for Aberdeen every time he had the ball at his feet and where was that when Connor go to when everyone was praising including me talking about how good we could pass it this way now and this way with two comfortable players Golton's left our back line and everyone is absolutely terrified of every single ball that comes anywhere near the box how can we still be so ever reliant sorry on one Defender, we talk about being reliant on a Morelos, reliant on a Ken. We're also reliant on Conor Gosey because look at the shape and the standard that we've been in since the big man got injured. But I am no going to go down that route. The new I thought Soapy actually had a decent game, but that was a massive blunder. But also, you could say he'd done the defending part. He's kicked it back to the goalie. What's McGregor actually doing? Just catching it. I just didn't get it, people. And again, I see uh, we've got a goalie, the Disney goalie. Do you want a crazy stat before I go any further on? Do you know we've conceded 40% of the shots that's been on our goals this season? 40%. That, uh, if you're not really paying attention, might say, well, it's nowhere 50% of cannon. No, that's ridiculous. 40% of every single shot that's been on our target this season has been a goal. We've basically got a poly pocket in there. And that absolutely sickens me to say that because you know what I think it Alan McGregor but I can't sit here and BS or be blind and just talk about my favourites and no criticise my favourites. He's no been good enough this season but again at his age should he be at the level we need him to be or anything like that? Probably no people. That's on the board, that's on the transfers, that's on the managers who's looked at this situation and continued to kick the can down the road and had no replacement actually ready so I. That's where we are in terms of that. But there does need to be said the next highlight in the game was again us people. And it was actually McGregor who kicked it to Tillman, brought it down in a sixpence. He drives forward with the ball. He then hits a ridiculous outside of the fit pass. The Sakala takes so well in his stride. He's running through 1v1. You're just thinking to yourself, put it in the back of the net. And what does he do? He runs right at the keeper and hits it straight at him. That is stinking. People. Honestly, stink. Go round the keeper. Look how fast you are. Hit it early before you get so close. But surely you can understand the closer you go to the keeper, the more it's favouring the keeper actually saving it. Especially when there's nothing about you. There's no curl, there's no finesse, there's no skill. It's just run up, kick it, straight at him. Pathetic and all. Honesty. And I know some of these might be saying, oh, that's far too harsh to be saying that's easy. That's out of your door. But is it? No, people, because again, this game for me has been us all season. We are getting the opportunities. We are getting the chances. They're just falling to people who aren't good enough to take them on the regular. I mean, look at the other side of the city. Look at Celtic, for instance. If you give them that chance, if you give a Kyogo that opportunity or a Jota, do you think they're running right at the goalkeeper and blasting it like that? And that way, no chance in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to be saying that, and I'm again, I'm, I, you never always want to keep bringing up your rivals, but that's the difference, that's why they are where they are, and we are where we are, people, because this is the players that we are relying on, and again, they are not good enough on the regular to take us to where we want to go, and that's not be second best in the country, we want to be the best, so we need better than what we've actually got. And Sakala showed again that, and I know he's always got a goal and a assist on him, and I know he brings you that, but for me, I like him as a winger. See this number nine stuff? Nah, people, this just isn't for me at all, because what happens next is, 
Uh, Tillman again does actually really well and people's going to slaughter the young lad there again and say he never done this but if people actually took the chances that he created we'd all be singing his name talking about three assists in this game because he takes the ball takes three Aberdeen players out it with a beautiful drag back back heel to Sakala and then he runs he beats the guys Sakala's got the ball here Morelos is making a gamble why is Morelos playing right wing to facilitate Sakala is a number nine. Is anyone else losing their mind? Why? I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Morelos this season, as you all know, and I don't think he's clinical by any stretch of the imagination, but it feels like we're so backwards that Morelos is going out here to make space for Sakala. It's blowing my mind, people. But anyway, the ball goes to Sakala, and again, when you give him too much uh, too much time on the ball, he just <laughs> balloons it out of the bar. Tillman's here on the left. Morelos is there to the right, both of them screaming at him, and they wonder, because it's just terrible for Sakala. Tillman again, after a nice little run and beat in, his man ends up playing out to Tavernier, who whips the ball to the back post, and Sakala, to be fair to him, he's got a leap on him, he does it down to Morelos, who takes the touch, Cantwell's probably in a better position, but Morelos isn't he passing that, he tries to spin it, has a shot, and to be fair, it's gone in, it's getting cle it ends up getting cleared off for of the defender, that's how close we came, another goal, or another shot that is cleared off the actual line. But that takes us to the 30th minute and we do actually have more good slick play in the build up with Tillman connecting very well with Cantwell who connects very well with Raskin, passes it to Sakala. Sakala tries like a wee back heel, ends up hitting the defender but Raskin, again a forward thinking player, gets on the ball, drives into the box and to be fair, this one I'm not going to slaughter anyone because actually it's very good defending for Pollock who just throws himself on the line and stops the shot that looked goal bound at that opportunity but aye, there's four golden opportunities to have this game wrapped up 32 minutes into the game. How many did we take? None. And that's been the story of our season. Speaking of story of the season, by the way, we go to the only opportunity that Aberdeen had in the first half. The only shot they had. And guess where it all originated from, people? Pop quiz. Anyone want to... Oh, sorry, you put your hand up. That's correct. It was the foot of a Rangers player. As Ben Davies just tries a random pass. And again, I'm no picking on him. I know Suter had a couple of wayward passes and that. But this one here directly just kicks straight to an Aberdeen player. But thankfully, the number nine for Aberdeen ends up being extremely greedy and not passing or we'd have been 1-0 doing right there. He had the blinkers on the Sakala, the Morelos blinkers, and it ends up being a, a comfortable save by McGregor as it's right at his near post. If he gets his heat up makes one pass into the middle, we've been beat again, but we've survived that scare. And we get into half time. Should have been two, maybe three, if we're being a bit more um, aggressive or anything like that with our actual play and being aggressive with the way we're actually looking at the game and taking to the standard that these players are supposed to actually set. We should have scored a couple goals, but we could have conceded. At least we got away with it. Let's get this second half, get second half started and let's start the game up here. Where's the players going to take it? Well, look what actually happened. And again, yes, there is an air of complete luck about this one, but maybe if you're looking at it fairly, right, you go back to that game we stole for them at Pataudry earlier in the season, they were two goals ahead, we ended up scoring the late goals and everything like that, and Arfield scoring the two late ones in the 90th minute where it was complete scenes, we stole that that day, maybe that was luck in our actual favour, and if you want to talk about the romance and that effect, well maybe Aberdeen, with the fact that they've scored this goal, got a wee bit of that magic dust back, as it's just across for skills, he tries to be early, but I want to pull it back just five seconds before the ball ends up in the back of net. We have the ball at our feet. Tavernier tries to play a pass into Alfredo Morelos. And what sickens me here is Morelos isn't blindsided. You go back and look at it. It looks once, looks twice, looks three times. And not once does he think to himself, I'll put a wee bit of effort in here, he just puts his arm up, the boy comes, runs by him, it's the same nonsense I talked about in the St Mirren game, that people were laughing at me and saying, hi, he scored two goals, but you keep talking about being flat-footed, that's flat-footed, that's lazy for Morelos, that's no good, I know he's got a great song and everybody loves him, that's lazy, right there, Scales runs and gets it, hits the cross, it ends up into the back of it, where again, for me, McGregor just loses it, it's not even Aram to a complete level, I think if he gets up there, he might, Catch something on it, but he doesn't even throw an air on it, or maybe I'm misremembering it, maybe, but, aye, it's a fluky goal, fluky cross, but it's completely self-inflicted again, as Morelos is sitting there being utterly lazy 
in flat footy. Morelos is very lucky his name's not Cholak or the entire Rangers Twitter would be after him for being so lazy. But we move on. People, what was the response like? Did we look sharp? Did we put our foot down? Did we say, right, they've scored a lucky goal. Let's not lose our heads and start doing that. But nah, we started to lose our heat and we started to do that. The usual stuff. And for me, this is where the likes of the Raskins and the Cantwell really stand out. And you can see what I talk about. And even the Tillmans to this, matter of fact, because they still created several opportunities and should have had two mere assists. We'll get to in a minute. But see, when you look at them three, genuinely, just look at them three. Even a suitor, if you want to add them in. You can see that they are not been bogged down and no feeling sorry for themselves. Maybe been ran into the ground by the staleness of this Rangers team. Because you look at Barisic, you even look at Tavernier, you look at the goalie, you look at Rune, the, the, the Morelos's, the Sicalas, they're all looking going, oh no, we've seen this story before. But they, they four, if you will, buzzing about trying to make things happen, trying to create things, trying to still get on the ball. And they're looking around saying, why is everyone's heat drop? Why is everyone's standard drop? But that's what we came to expect because, again, there is so many players in this team that is beyond stale. And we look beat 1-0 doing, and that's an embarrassment to actually say, especially considering the way the game was going. And it was only going to be a matter of fact when Aberdeen scored again. They had a couple nearly weak counter-attacks where Big Soapy, again, done pretty well, in my opinion, bailing out Ben Davies a couple times. And then the goal comes, Tavernier... Well, I think he's trying to pass it again, or is it a, a challenge? I can't really remember. I think it's maybe a tackle, maybe it'll be overly harsh here. But it goes straight to an Aberdeen player. They whip it into the back post. Barisic is just cutting about like a scarf in a wind. Useless in that matter of fact. And the big number nine gets a header on it to slap it by. McGregor, who's standing there again, just completely irrelevant. And I've seen that story too many times. Across to the back post, where Barisic is nowhere near it, and McGregor isn't he reacting to it? I've seen it too many times. We shouldn't be seeing it anymore. Now, some people were trying to say it was offside and complaining. I think Rangers TV was complaining, the matter of fact, and saying that they don't understand what's wrong with VAR. But for me, it was onside. Don't know if anyone's going to correct me and shout at me in the comments. He's a little bit nervous and that. But aye, I know he's, this part of his arm is offside, but you can't score with that part of your arm. So aye. Was no offside, in my opinion. Right, but it's 2-0 now, and you think, right, we're going to see some substitutions at least. Maybe we'll change to the three at the back to actually unravel the St Mirren, stubborn St Mirren side, because people misremember that five-goal performance. Remember everyone was slaughtering me for saying, oh, you, you make, you absolutely love Kent so much, blah, blah, we scored five goals. How do we look today, people? Let's remember the St Mirren game. It was dire until we change the three at the back, and I'm thinking, right, we must be going to make San here. Maybe we're going to make a wee change. Maybe we're going to try San. But we never, we had Scotty Arfield stripped around about the 70th minute, ready to come on. Ready, ready, ready. Five minutes goes by, the ball goes out three or four times, he's not coming on. Aberdeen players doing the phantom lies, doing heed knocks, kidding on, they've got concussions, aye, that's great. And everything like that. Arfield's still not coming on. Then we tell Arfield to go and sit down. Then, 12 minutes later, on the 8th and 9th minute, we bring him on. What was Michael Beale doing? People, I know it's not a big thing regarding this game, but I just didn't understand that at all. I want someone to explain to me why you had Arfield sitting there in the 74th minute ready to come on. You make him stand for five minutes, you tell him to sit on the bench, then you tell him to come on with eight minutes to actually go. That's a waste to him, if I'm honest with you. Now, again, a lot like other players, I think he has became stale in this Rangers team and we do need an injection. But he still offers you son and he deserves better than that nonsense of getting treated like that as well. Because somehow Sakala played 88 minutes. I can understand maybe holding off on a substitution if the player you're about ready to come off um, starts to explode and starts to impact the game. Sakala was dire the day. Everything, remember we say we give him and then he takes and everything like that. And he, what he gives us, sorry, he takes away in other areas. He gave us none in this game. He only took away, yet still played 88 minutes. I just didn't get it. I thought Arfield deserved a wee bit better there. Sorry for the rant. It just confused me, if I'm honest. It was almost like we tried to bluff a substitution that Arfield was coming on. Then he changed. He looked a bit lost the day. And I didn't want to really say that, because I really like Bill and I think he will be successful in his team when he gets his players. But he looked lost on how he changed that the day. And that, for me was a worry, but we did have a couple of opportunities to maybe get back into the game. First one being Suter again makes a nice run towards the box. Cantwell does a good little touch slash pass into Raskin. Ends up being very well defended from there. Tillman gets on the ball, hits a lovely through ball, just ridiculous skill to put it in behind Aberdeen. We have another kind of 1v1. It's a little bit wide, 
Ravi Matondo's running through, he tries to curl it in the near post, it ends up hitting the post, we hit the post for the second time in this occasion, and it ends up gone wide. Again, Tillman sets another Rangers player 1v1 with the keeper, and McCanny actually make it. He's done his job, be it because the strikers aren't doing their job, we then starts pointing fingers at this laddie. It's weird to me, I just didn't get it, but didn't get it, leads me to the last opportunity of the game. Barisic has just gave up at this point, just starts hitting random crosses, the usual Barisic stuff we've all came to expect when his head goes. This should actually falls though, because we've got six or seven Rangers players, falls right to Tavernier, two, three yards, well, maybe four or five yards, I should say, and he just hits the volley straight at the goalkeeper. Anywhere else, it's a goal, but that probably sums up when even the skipper who's saved us many times and scored so many big goals is having an absolute stinker and can he score for four or five yards out. And aye, there was eight minutes extra time, but who was the only team that looked like scoring? Again, them. Duncan missed a 1v1 after miraculously recovering from a concussion. People, well done him. Very glad he was recovered so quickly to be able to jump right up soon as the whistle went and asked to be playing came on. The actual part ends up missing a 1v1 on his own as he ends up blasting it again at McGregor. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the game recap. That's what I remember. It was a, such a... Again, a full story of our season rammed into one. There is a version, there is an alternative timeline out there, people, where your strikers actually put the ball into the back of it and we're celebrating and happy the night. But again, we're let down by this side of the park, we're let down by this side of the park, and we're um, the ends that's in the middle who's actually creating and looking like Rangers players are getting completely let down by everything around them. And that's genuinely how I feel, people. The end of the season cannot come soon enough in my opinion, I'm no one excuses, I'm no wanting the cheerleading and the press and the media, be like, oh yes, they're up for this game now, versus Celtic, they're up for this game now, aye, we heard that going into this game as well, that's why I'm not sitting here making preview videos, people, because I'm not wanting to lie to you and tell you nonsense, when it looks like nonsense, when it smells like nonsense, it's nonsense, people, and I want to sit here and spread it, certainly won't we'll be doing that, but that's my opinion, a couple of people really punched their tickets on leaving this football club, in my opinion, and again, I've made my opinion be clear on all those players. And the last thing I want to say, by the way, and I know it sounds like I'm just moaning, but there is one last thing that I want to talk about, it is Mr. Zach loveless people right this is a striker who is scoring goals week in and we could every time he touches a blade of grass he's putting the ball into the back the back and it do you know what that brings you confidence form and belief three things that our strikers don't actually have i know he's a young lad and i know he's scoring at a lower level but the goalposts never ever move you've got someone who who's actually a number nine he's not a sakala he's not a winger being played as a nine he's not a morelos who's checked out and everything like that and waiting to go you've got a lovely sitting there raring to give an, an opportunity and i just think with the league being done what are we doing as a football club how embarrassing are we as a football club there's someone there who again is young, but this lad made his debut at 15 years old coming on for Millwall. He came on in the championship when he was 15. That's telling you the kid's got son. He's used to a kick or two. I just don't know what we are doing as a football club. Now that the league season is gone, we still didn't give a young lad like this an actual opportunity over the dross that we're having to actually watch. It's baffling to me, and I just wish we were a bit more forward-thinking than that. And some people will say, I will, Bill sees him week in and week out. He sees everything. CJ, I will, Bill also sees who he's actually picking week in and week out. So I'm not really wanting to get lost in that argument. I know his hands are tied behind his back with some of the players he has to pick, but you've got a guy there with a month or two left on his contract playing in league games. I'd just like to see the young laddie given an actual opportunity. That's all. I wanted to say. What has gone wrong? What does this team actually need? Or are you in a similar mind with me that there are so many stale, defeated players that's actually in this team that need to be moved on for the betterment of this football club? I'd be interested to see what you've actually got to say in the comment section. Well, before we do wrap up today's video, however, on a wee bit of a lighter note, because there's actually some good news apps out there, John. I know you're a long-time subscriber of your channel. Your daughter's actually got in touch with me on social media. I know you're down in the YouTube ad. Creed's 1958. I know you're a long-time viewer of the channel and everything. You've been supporting the channel for many years and you've actually just had heart surgery and everything and you're battling and you're fighting and everything. And I just wanted to say thanks so much for the support over the years, big man, and hopefully the recovery goes on and hopefully we have a lot more 
celebrating to actually day right here on the channel. One, one on the weekend would be absolutely nice, but that was really nice, your daughter reaching out, and again, thanks so much for all the support, but that is us, done and dusted with the video, that is us, we look forward, and now to the weekend, I'll bring you some content during this week to try and lighten the mood, but also talk about things that need to be spoken about. We spoke about Ken, is it over? I think the next one's going to be Morelos, is it over? Spoiler alert, and aye, that's us, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below, and as always, I've been CJ Over92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.